studio had tested people, uh, Edward G. Robinson and some extras and whatnot, with these kind of hard, uh, uh, hard prosthetics that were more like uh, like slip rubber, but it wasn't like even foam latex. It was foam latex, but it was so dense that it was on, it could, and then it was at the edges were as thick as a nickel, and so uh, that was kind of a big failure. So when John came in, we got as many pictures of apes as we could, and um, and put them all around the studio, and so we started casting up. Uh, we cast uh, like four different people to play the different parts: the orangutan, chimpanzee, and gorilla. And so John started sculpting on them. The, the but the big the big worry was from Arthur Jacobs, the, the producer, was that if they were going to hire a well-known actress, would she play in the in with that with that makeup on, on her face. So they were real worried that she would be so unappealing that they wouldn't want to they wouldn't want her to do a, I mean she wouldn't want to do the part. So that was their big concern. So John started sculpting and he sculpted them much more like apes than what you saw in the movie. They had kind of more flat noses and and um, they were when when Arthur Jacobs and, and um, Lord Abrams, the producers came in to see it. They were again worried that it was just too too ugly. Well, John allowed me to. Uh, I'm not taking credit for this, but but it's strange. He, I asked him if I couldn't sculpt the gorilla, and he said, "We'll do it in the back room," because he didn't want them to see what I was doing, and I wasn't very good at that time. But because I wasn't very good, it looked a little human, a little ape. And when they, when Lord Abrams was walking around, they were trying to figure out what was wrong with. What John was doing, they were beautiful pieces, by the way. They, Ward Abrams walked in the back room and saw my gorilla head. And he's called Arthur Jacobs and he said, Look at this. This is what we're talking about. And, you know, I'm a young apprentice and I look at John Chambers, who was this big, tough Irish guy, and he looks at me. <laughs> and I thought, I thought he's going to kill me. And so, uh, they looked at the, they kept looking at this face and saying, well, that, what they liked more about it was the nose was a little more human. And uh, John kept saying, yeah, yeah, okay, well, when you come back the next week, I'll make those changes. Well, John, let's just talk about this. He didn't want to talk about it. And I'm, I got one side of me is so proud that they, the, the producers liked what I did. On the other side of me, I, I see John is furious. <laughs> so they leave and said, we'll be in next week. <laughs> so John went back and took that sculpture I did and just smashed it on the floor and he said, get out of here, get out of here. So he was a, he was a tough guy. And so I would spend about three days back in the makeup department filling bottles and doing all the apprenticeship duties. And he kept coming down and trying to catch me and screwing off because it was, it was just eating away at him. He was so angry. And finally, he came back to the room we called the tent and I had drawn a picture of myself on a cross and I put on his bottom and I said things I can laugh when things aren't funny. And so he came in and he says, what are you doing? I said, I'm having lunch. He said, it's 11 30, you don't have lunch until 12 30. I said, well, I came in early this morning. They told me to go early. And then he saw the the picture I drew and he just started laughing. And he just laughed. I mean tears were coming down his face. Alright, I said back in the lab. <clears throat> the thing is that we never spoke. Thank <laughs> you.